consider the following relations the relations are students and performance and we are given two tables the students relation considers of two columns roll number and name and the performance table considers consists of roll number course and marks both these relations have the primary key as roll number okay Okay, so here in performance, the roll number alone cannot be a primary key. A combination of roll number and course will be a primary key because a primary key cannot have repeated values or the primary key is always unique. So a combination of roll number and course would define this table. Okay, so now the question is, consider the following SQL query. Select S dot name comma sum of P dot marks from students S performance p where s dot roll number is equal to p dot roll number and group by s dot name the number of rows that will be returned by the sql query is so initially when we have written this statement where s dot roll number is equal to p dot roll number it means that in the first step of the execution of this query a natural join would take place that would be based on the common column roll number okay so what would be the intermediate result or the table that would be resulting when we execute this condition and both these tables are combined using a natural join based on roll number column the intermediate table would be something like the roll number name course and marks okay and we will match the values in both these tables based on the roll number so one the name is Raj and what are the options of courses one roll number has taken up maths as well as English and the marks correspondingly are 80 and 70 and similarly when we fill up for roll number 2 which is Rohit again Rohit has taken up subject math as well as the subject physics then the marks of Rohit are 75 and 65 and we'll make another row of roll number and names then the last student which is again having a name of Raj. Raj has also taken up two courses so we'll make two rows. The courses are English and Maths and the marks corresponding to these subjects are 80 and 80. Alright so this would be the intermediate table that would be resulting and what do we have to select from this table? We have to select the name as well as the sum of the marks column and this sum would be based on the name okay so we have to group by the name attribute so what we do we basically select each name each different name and group all the marks that are corresponding to that name so one name is Raj the values corresponding to Raj are 80 70 80 and 80. Now please consider this that here roll number column is not being selected. So after executing this natural join the columns name and sum of p dot marks would be selected. Only these two columns would be selected and further a summation of the marks will be done based on the common names. So there are only two names here Raj and Rohit. No matter these this Raj and this Raj are different persons because they have different roll number but since this query is not taking roll number column into account therefore we select two names which are Raj and Rohit and the summation of their marks. The name first name is Raj the sum of marks would be sum of 80 plus 70 which is 150 then plus 80 plus 80 so 150 plus 160 would give you a total of 310 okay
Then the second name that would be considered here is the next distinct name which is Rohit and these two values would be summed up and the sum of these two values is 140. So the result of this particular query would be a table or a relation having two columns and two rows which have the values of name as Raj and Rohit and sum as 310 and 140. So the answer is the number of rows which is 2. So the one point that you have to keep in mind here is that since we are grouping only by name and we are not grouping based on the unique or the primary key that exists in this relation. In this intermediate relation in which the natural join has taken place, the the primary key would be roll number, name and course, okay? Or in fact, uh, not even roll number, name and course. It would be uh, a primary key would not be possible here because in this row, 1 Raj Math 80 and 3 Raj Math. Okay, so a primary key of roll number, name and course is possible, sorry. So that would be the primary key and unless and until we group by the primary key, this would be the result because here we are not taking primary key into account. So I hope you understood this question. In this question, the concept of grouping and taking the summation of the marks based on the required column that is specified in the group by clause is necessary and must be known to you. It says that two processes X and Y need to access a critical section. Consider the following synchronization construct used by both the processes. So you have two processes, process X and process Y. The first process says that there is some code for process X and after that code and there is a while loop in which the critical section is executed and after this while loop there is another code or uh, that is continued for uh, process x this should be x okay so uh, process has some code before the while loop some code after the while loop and in this while loop the entry to the critical section is uh, maintained or uh, allowed or disallowed. So the critical section entry is allowed by the while loop which is always true or it checks the condition while true. There is a variable var p which is set to true after entering the while loop. Then the in the inner while loop another variable var q is checked if var q is equal to equal to true. That means if the value of var q is found to be true, then only we enter into the inner while loop and in the inner while loop, we execute the critical section and after executing the critical section, there is a remainder section which says that var p equal to false. So initially we set var p equal to true, then at the end or after the execution of the critical section, we set var p equal to false. After that, some other code or the remaining code for process X is executed and correspondingly, there is another process Y which has some code and after that code, there is another similar while loop which checks while true. Then in the inner loop, there is a checking for var P equal to equal to true. Before this inner loop, var Q is set to true and we enter into the critical section if the value of var p is true and after the critical section we set the value of variable var q equal to false okay so these are two processes they are both trying to access the code in their critical section and since at a particular time we only want a particular single process to be in its critical section so we have to synchronize both these processes so that Mutual exclusion is followed. That means, what does mutual exclusion mean? That at a particular time, only one process is allowed to enter its critical section. So the remaining question says that here var p and var q are shared variables and both are initialized to false. Which one of the following is true? And we are given the options. The option is the above solution prevents deadlock but fails to provide mutual exclusion. The second option says that the above solution provides mutual exclusion but does not prevent deadlock. 
C option is the solution provides mutual exclusion and prevents deadlock and B option is it neither prevents deadlock nor it provides mutual exclusion. So basically here the focus is on two concepts deadlock and mutual exclusion. So one thing you have to remember in case of deadlocks and mutual exclusion is that since a deadlock can only happen if mutual exclusion and other conditions like no preemption and circular weight are true. So in case in this question if we find that mutual exclusion is not being followed. So indirectly we will know that deadlock condition cannot occur because a deadlock requires certain conditions to be existing so that it can happen and one of those conditions is mutual exclusion. So if in this question we find there is no mutual exclusion that means no deadlock can occur or if there is mutual exclusion deadlock may happen okay depending upon other conditions that prevail. Now first see let's see that if the mutual exclusion can happen or not. So when we check for mutual exclusion we need to check that what will happen if both the processes try to enter and access their critical sections at the same time. So what both these processes will do both of them would come to their while condition since while true this condition will always be true then they enter into their first or the outer while loop process x sets the value of where p equal to true and simultaneously process y sets the value of where q equal to true and why I am saying simultaneously because both these processes are trying we have assumed that both these processes are trying to access their critical section at the same time and if they are able to do so we will be able to say that there is no mutual exclusion. So process x sets where p equal to true process y sets where q equal to true. So at this time both these variables where p and where q are true. Okay then both of them come to their inner while loop. In the inner while loop of process x it checks if the value of where q is true. Yes it at this point it will find the value of where q as true because just now process y had set it to be true okay and since it finds this value or this condition to be true it will enter in its critical section and simultaneously process y will also check for the value of where p where p was set to true by process x before this inner while loop and therefore this condition will also be true and process y will also be allowed to enter into critical section. So both these processes can enter into their critical section at the same time and this is a clear violation of mutual exclusion that means mutual exclusion is not being followed. So since mutual exclusion is not being followed and mutual exclusion is a requirement one of the requirements for deadlock to exist therefore our answer would be that mutual exclusion it does not exist but deadlock cannot happen okay so let's read the options the option a was above solution prevents deadlock but fails to provide mutual exclusion yes the first option is correct in itself because both these processes are able to enter their critical section at the same time there is no mutual exclusion and since there is no mutual exclusion a deadlock would be prevented so this was the answer of this question and it is not a very difficult question if you know how to check for various criteria of happening of a deadlock or synchronization of two processes so keep in mind what is the basic idea of all these conditions so that you are able to check and answer such questions that's all for today's lecture thank you for watching please let us know in the comment section below if you like this video and you want more such videos in our preparation series of gate computer science UGC net and bank it officer exams Stay tuned to our channel of easy engineering classes and press the bell icon to get the notifications of our more upcoming new videos so that you don't miss anyone. Thank you.